All right, what's happening? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. And I mean, as you can see in the background, poor Tressway. He deserves better than this. And I know this isn't like the most breaking news. If anything, this is kind of obvious and expected. So that's why we're going to put a little twist on this to really dive into like, is this 2021 draft class that Cameron Cheeseman is from worse than this 2023 one that we've been complaining about with Emmanuel Forbes and a lot of these other guys that are hurt. Even before they got hurt, they didn't play, didn't even make the 53 man roster all kinds of stuff like that but first we of course got to talk about cameron cheeseman our long snapper finally getting cut long time coming was this the wor worst ron rivera idea ever because there's a lot of bad ones out there but is this the worst one and we also i mean of course with this potentially being one of ron rivera's worst ideas we gotta talk about how bad it truly was and is this like really the straw that is now officially broken the camel's back and rivera is definitely out of here like i said i felt like rivera is for sure out of here regardless but i feel like this whole long snapper debacle just kind of adds to his highlights of oh yeah that's why he got fired basically his low lights um but before we dive into all of that make sure you still farm that like button still farm the subscription button and still farm the bell next to that subscription button so you get another notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned for all of the content again i'm cooking up a mock draft and of course you know first of all i just feel like it's time no matter what would have happened even if sam Howe would have went out there and balled out i think it's time for us to finally take a quarterback in the first round with a mock draft but now with how bad of a run sam howes basically had and i have some stats to basically back up that that may have arguably been one of sam howes worst games even though he didn't throw as many interceptions you know the main thing is that you could kind of say at least those other games the offensive line was terrible or thing or the receivers weren't getting open but this was probably his worst game as an individual isolated by himself whereas really you're looking around and you don't really have too many other people to blame type of thing so regardless it's time to do a quarterback mock draft i think you'll be surprised and a lot of people very happy about what the quarterback out of us taking but just because we're taking quarterback in the first round does not mean that we're just going to completely ignore offensive line but make sure you stay tuned for that and so many other videos that I'm working on as well. But let's go ahead and dive into this video, man. Let's get to it. Let's get it. He's our quarterback for the five, 10 years. And I truly believe that. All right, so the commanders have officially released long snapper Cameron Cheeseman. Not a surprise after yesterday's or slash this season, um, but Washington moves quickly after the game. They should have, I don't even consider this quickly. They moved quickly after the Rams game, but quickly in general, definitely not. He should have been cut a long time ago. We've been dealing with these problems since the preseason, since the offseason, we were seeing him struggling. And it's so weird because last year it just didn't feel like it was much of a problem. Then there was this excuse brought out that he was changing techniques, but then later on, somebody reported a few people reported that like it wasn't really a technique change it's more so like a confidence thing and a change in his technique so that he can improve his con some crazy either way he's been terrible he's been inconsistent all year a lot of the blame that joey sly's been getting for a lot of his missed kicks um you know a lot of it was actually cameron cheeseman's fault and i'm fine i'm happy that a lot of it's finally coming to light um because i mean i love the fact that even the commentators broke it down and showed it in slow motion because of how bad his snap was how long it took Tressway to corral that and then by the time Joey Sly gets the kickoff it gets um blocked man this game is a game of inches and microseconds you can't afford to have dumb stuff like that going on and it's literally been happening all season it's just the fact that you know everybody was kind of watching with the bright lights the game became closer Tressway got hurt because of it that it seems like it was worse yesterday against the Rams but to be completely honest this is pretty much how it's been the majority of the season I'm not gonna act like every game he's had has been an absolutely terrible long snapping situation but it's been really bad all season man it really has i'm not even sure if yesterday was the worst again i just think tressway getting hurt and then because of him uh potentially not even a game tie and just making it a seven point game to make it seem like there's a chance we could come back send it to overtime or anything like that with that getting blocked it was just the moments that it happened that it made it seem like it's been worse but you could argue he's had worse long snaps this season just in general 
viral as far as like how high it's gone in the air. There's been times Tressway has had to jump up and basically get a rebound to corral in some of the long snaps that he's thrown, man. Poor him. And Tressway is just like the direct victim to all of this. I mean, I know Joey Sly, you know, with him missing kicks and stuff like that, that sucks. But I mean, no matter what, Cameron Cheeseman is snapping the Tressway, whether it's a punt or a kick. Because Tressway has to catch it for Joey Sly to kick it. And when he's being a punter, Tressway has to catch it, as you saw, like when he got hit that way. And that hit was kind of unnecessary. I wouldn't call it dirty, but I would definitely call it unnecessary. They didn't have to do all of that. He's on the ground. He's just trying to hold on to the ball. Just touch him, man. Y'all got it, bruh. Y'all are up, man. Y'all got it. Y'all win, man. It's okay. God, leave, man. Chill out type of thing. Um, But that's all Cameron Cheeseman's fault. We're not in that situation where those Rams players can even do that to Tressway. And he has to go to the locker room to be checked out for a concussion and all of that because Cameron Cheeseman is doing terrible long snaps. Um, but, yeah, this is just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you got to, first of all, remember that we traded up to get this guy. And not only traded up, but traded up to where the Eagles were. So the Eagles took some of our draft capital for us to get a long snapper that can't long snap. It's in the name. You're a long snapper that can't do long snaps. What are you here? Like, that's the most direct, you have one job type of situation. For you to be bad at that makes absolutely no sense. And then again, back to my point of how long this took is absolutely ridiculous how long it took for us to finally get rid of him. I mean, the season's already over. Like we're already officially eliminated from the playoffs. Now you cut him. I feel like that's the exact opposite. At this point, it's kind of like it doesn't really matter, even though I prefer for Tressway to not potentially get hurt anymore. But when we were trying to win games, when we were trying to make the playoffs, you kept them. And then now we're eliminated from the playoffs. Now you cut him. But I mean, I'm happy that he's gone. I mean, I'm, I don't want to get down on a player for losing their job for any reason whatsoever, no matter what's going on. This is his livelihood, even though it's ridiculous how much money he's making to be a bad long snapper. I'm like, you could pay me that money and I'll go out there and do the same thing. But it, it's just absolutely crazy that like we, we're doing it now. But at the same time, I'm happy that we are because now we can basically hold in-season tryouts to find our, our next long snapper before we finish this season because now on top of all of the other needs of entire offense line basically except for you can argue i guess right guard with samuel cosme and i like some of the guys we have at left guard chris paul and sadiq charles but i wouldn't be surprised if this next regime comes in and wants to get an immediate upgrade over those guys as well um but we need basically majority of the o-line most importantly left tackle both tackle spots and center um we need linebackers we need corners we need edge rushers we need a big receiver at the very least we need a tight end you can argue we need a quarterback we have so many needs and so what sucks is that now you have to also add long snapper to that list hopefully we can fill that need we can find a good long snapper before the end of the season we have three more games to figure it out but golly man can ron rivera can you do us one more favor on the way out and find a good long snapper so this next regime doesn't have to worry about that on top of all of the other mess that you and martin mayhew have created since y'all been here um but also again the fact that it took this long most other organizations i would argue possibly even all other organizations would have never have let him stay around this bad long and protected him ron rivera said back in like mid-november that we figured some things out which lets you know that cameron cheeseman was what was really bad before november because ron rivera had to come out and say yeah i know he's been bad but we figured some things out he should be good to go lo and behold he's not good to go at all and if anything it's only gotten worse but what's crazy is that when he was interviewed after the game against the Rams last night they and they asked him how he felt about the situation he basically said something to the extent of yeah I'm surprised I'm here I probably would have even cut myself by now type of tone this is his exact quote on if he's worried that will the commanders make a change at long snapper which of course they've officially done that's why I'm reporting this to y'all he said quote I mean I've been worried all year I mean, that should tell you everything you need to know. That, that's how you know he's been bad all year. Um, I haven't been performing the way I've been wanting to. Most places, I probably wouldn't even be still be around, unquote. And I'm thinking maybe he meant that as a compliment. Like, man, Rivera and those guys are so patient. They're giving me every opportunity and all of that type of stuff. I feel like, if anything, most of us is reading that. If not all of us is reading that. Like, that's not a compliment. That's an indictment on Ron Rivera's incompetency and the inability to make changes when we need them made like i feel like he thought he was doing ron rivera a favor but if anything he just made things worse 
he literally went out there and said most other places i probably wouldn't still be around but when it comes to the commanders oh yeah i could do these bad long snaps all year ha 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 type of thing so that's that's crazy in itself but Rivera did address it today first of all by firing Cameron Cheeseman and also by holding a press conference he said that they're working off of a list of potential long snappers to replace Cameron Cheeseman Tucker Addington among those who worked out earlier this year so don't be surprised if we bring in a Tucker Addington for like a workout or something like that it's just still crazy that we traded up to get this guy not only did you draft a, a long snapper in general just period but to trade up to get him in the sixth round is absolutely ridiculous dog um and so again like i said now on top of the already long list of needs that we have for this team even as it currently stands but then on top of all of that all of the 2024 unrestricted free agents so many starters curtis samuel arguably our most efficient receiver this season kendall fuller arguably our most efficient corner this season jacoby Brissett, who went out there and balled out for two drives compared to sam howe our top three linebackers with jamin davis currently on ir our top three linebackers cody barton khalid Hudson, and david mayo are all unrestricted free agents our all pro special team and jamie reese even though he hasn't played the majority of the season he's been on ir um since like week five or something like that but still all of our edge rushers we traded away chase young montez sweat and then fa obata case two hill and jay smith williams are all unrestricted free agents as well like as soon as this regular season ends our top linebacker is i don't i don't even know i mean it's jamin davis on ir and friends and then edge rusher is kj henry and Andre jones and if they for some reason want to keep shaka tony i i don't know um antonio gibson brian robinson's been banged up he's your number one back and even when brian robinson's there it's like a two-headed monster type of thing he's an unrestricted free agent you're starting center right now because we met we that, that nick gates pickup wasn't good so we moved on from nick gates to tyler larson not due to injury just because nick gates has been bad he's an unrestricted free agent are you going to be able to bring him back i mean it's just up and down the list jamison crowder your punt returner that i really hope we, we bring back is an unrestricted free agent joey sly you're technically franchise kicker like literally your kicker the starting kicker, the only kicker that we have on this team, is an unrestricted free agent. Sadiq Charles, technically your starting left guard when healthy, unrestricted free agent. Cameron Curl, your starting strong safety, Buffalo Nickel, star position, whatever you want to call it. He's unrestricted free agent. We're going to have to find a way to pay him. Luckily, right now, though, his market value is at 15 million dollars a year but the way he's been playing lately i'm not even sure about that we'll see um that's a whole nother debate in itself i mean this is incredible like how many needs we have even before we get out like right now how many needs we have is ridiculous but at the end of this regular season when all of those guys i just named become unrestricted free agents our needs get even larger and worse and more and like more we got to do something about this right now type of thing i mean maybe they try to resign a lot of these guys but if we don't or even if we do still have a problem with needs and i'm saying all of that to say that now with that laundry list of needs you also have to add long snapper to that potentially hopefully they can figure it out before that though but shouts out to my boy ken johannison over there burgundy burg a burner on twitter always brings up great um great tweets another guy I support um the long way he said i wish cameron cheeseman the best going forward i completely agree his playing career is likely over completely agree with that as well but he has a degree from michigan a great academic institution and plenty of money for a great start for the rest of his life i saw that and i wanted to make sure i did read that out because again i don't want to just completely bash him and his life is has a bright future to it but as far as playing in the nfl that's over with my boy um jp finley also tweeted commanders had no choice but to cut camera cheeseman nice young man but that's a binary position no context either you can snap it or you can't plain and simple and it should have happened two months ago i would argue probably even before then um in the tanta podcast shout out to them as well because i mean they pointed out the fact that we're having long snapper drama at four and ten I mean, what kind of stuff is that? I mean, we are a special case of just sorry. Like, no, nobody else deals with a lot of the stuff that we deal with, man. No, There's not a lot of teams out there really worried about long snapper and quarterback, left tackle, linebacker. I mean, golly, man. Unrestricted free agents, all of this stuff. But I'm still very optimistic about our future because I think the next regime is going to come in and do a great job. But right now, it is looking pretty ugly. Um, and so now I got to take a look at this 2021 draft class that Cameron Cheeseman came from. You have Jamin Davis in the first round. Pretty solid player, but not a first round pick. Samuel Cosme, 
one of the very few second round picks that we've made that has actually worked out he misses games sometimes due to injury but he's our best offensive lineman i'm not i don't even think it's close benjamin st juice was really good until this season it's just like he just had a slump he's been getting targeted and abused even though i believe he ended up being our highest graded defensive player from that game it just still seems like he gives up too many yards in coverage diami brown never sparked as much as we hoped john bates is solid that's cool i mean he can block he can catch the occasional pass but he's not like this dual threat tight end that you build an offense around Derek forrest um, he, he seemed pretty solid, even though towards the end when he was playing, it was starting to seem like, man, is it his fault? Is it Jack Real's fault? I'm not sure. But since Derek Forrest has been gone, it hasn't been much better. So I don't, I'm not even sure if it was his fault. But then this is a guy that's been hurt all season. So hopefully he comes back healthy. We'll see. Then you have Cameron Cheeseman in the sixth round, who we traded up for. Then William Bradley King, who... And on and off the roster, practice squad and all that type of stuff, eventually gone. Shaka Tony, banned from the league for a year for gambling. And then Dax Milne. And that speaks for itself right there with the whole Dax Mill situation. Um, so my main point is we complain about this 2023 draft class and talk about how terrible it is. But is this 2021 the worst one ever? At least since Rivera's been here. I mean, since Rivera's been here, all four of his draft classes have competition with each other for the worst one. Um, you could try to look at that 2021 one and the 2023 one like, oh, boy, type of stuff. 2022, too, man. Come on. Yo, Fedarian Mathis, second round pick, has one tackle this season. And I know he missed a few games, but he's been back for multiple games. What is that? I mean, we could dive into the 2022 class as well, but I mainly want to focus on 2021 and 2023. So also, before we even get to 2023, man, do not forget about the fact that first round pick wise since Rivera's been here, traded, um, we, we drafted Chase Young. We ended up trading him for a comp pick. Jamin Davis, Drafted him as a Mike linebacker, moved him to Will linebacker, outside linebacker. Jahan Dotson had one target yesterday, and it was a catch from, and then he only got it because Jacoby Brissett came into the game. Sam Howells refusing to even look his way. And then Emmanuel Forbes had six snaps yesterday, and Rivera said because of matchup. What does that mean? The, the contradiction that we have going on right now is the part that's really making me upset because, I, again, wins and losses, if anything, I prefer to lose because I want a higher draft pick. But like I've been screaming, this is the time to evaluate and develop, especially the younger guys. Emmanuel Forbes needs to be playing as much as possible. Quan Martin, Cajun Henry, Khalid Hudson, all of the young guys. And I'm happy that Khalid Hudson started over David Mayo. And I like Danny Johnson, but I'm happy that we cut him so that the younger guys can get more snaps. That Danny Johnson cut was not a, oh, this is going to improve our secondary to improve our chances of winning. That was, yeah, we've pretty much given up on the playoffs. Let's evaluate this young talent. So if that's what you're doing in so many other places on the team, what is the purpose of giving Emmanuel Forbes only six snaps? because of matchup are you trying to win the game or not you cut danny johnson it sounds like you don't want to win the game but you only play your first round pick emmanuel forbes six snaps because you want to win the game i'm so confused that contradiction right there is the reason that i want to fire ron rivera myself i don't even get that um but moving on Speaking of Emmanuel Forbes, my boy Chad Ryan brings up a great pick. Just a reminder that in the behind the scenes footage released by the commanders, Rivera was shown exactly talking about taking Forbes the morning before the draft even started. And really feels like he got locked in and refused to pivot when other cornerbacks fell in the first round got weird. I mean, we didn't necessarily expect Christian Gonzalez to be there. And I feel like going into the draft, they didn't necessarily think so either. I think they felt like he would go sooner than our pick. Um, and then Dante Banks, Christian Gonzalez all there. We took Emmanuel Forbes. And I still hope Emmanuel Forbes works out. But like, God, Lee, man, the roster construction, the decision making in, in every way possible, clock management, all of that has been absolutely terrible, Rivera. And the thing, again, that's making me the most upset as of right now is the fact this contradiction of let's play our young guys and let's allow them to develop let's evaluate them give them some teaching tape going into the offseason for the next regime to build around and then but for some reason your first round pick emmanuel forbes doesn't get the same treatment i just the apps i don't get it and then your your second round pick and quan martin is starting to shine like he's hooping you can argue he was our best pick of the draft so far right now ricky strongberg 
wasn't that great before he got hurt. He was starting to improve, but he's on IR. Braden Daniels didn't even make the roster. We had to basically tell him to fake an injury so we could put him on injured reserve so nobody would take him because we already knew he was unplayable in his rookie season. You took that guy in the fourth round. KJ Henry, like his potential, he fl he's flashed a little bit. He hasn't been doing a great job of getting to the quarterback necessarily other than the, the sack that he was supposed to get but they took it away due to some ridiculous rough in the passer call that didn't even make sense a few weeks ago um but he's starting to flash i like him in the fifth round chris rodriguez in the sixth round he always seems to get some yards at the contact and fall forward i'm liking that a little bit and andre jones shined he's a seventh round pick so how much can we critique that and he shined during the off season but uh since he's gotten moments in in the regular season late um in the past couple of weeks he hasn't really made the most of it uh i'm telling you man that i mean it takes a few years to really judge a draft class it really takes till you you're about to get to those second contracts so it's really hard to judge the 2023 draft class but uh, it's even hard to judge the 2021 one but it's especially difficult to judge the 2023 one right now but both of them look really bad right now i'm not gonna lie so right now man team needs wise is looking ugly we already went down the list and I'm afraid the long snapper just may be another one that we have to add to that laundry list of needs we already have. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you feel about everything discussed in this video, especially the whole Cameron Cheeseman situation and how it relates to Ron Rivera's incompetent coaching era that he's had with the commanders is this like the straw that's broken the camel's back for you or josh harris you may feel like also let me know how you feel about the 2021 draft class compared to the 2023 one which one is worse and don't forget man for darian matt the second round pick one tackle all year yeah, that 2022 one we might just gotta start looking at that one a little crazy as well um so let me know how you feel about all of that man i really appreciate y'all again stay tuned follow the content become a channel member if you haven't yet because i'm working on exclusive um footage for y'all exclusive videos just for y'all so make sure y'all stay tuned make sure you leave a like on the way out stiff arm that like button even if you don't donate to the channel at the very least if you just leave a like on the way out and leave a comment and i'm doing my best to try to read and reply to as many comments as possible but as you see i'm working videos on top of videos live streams and stuff like that so i'm super busy but i'm trying my best but on the way out at the very least even if you don't have nothing to say just leave like a little thumbs up comment and definitely leave a like or even leave a dislike but just engage with the channel i really appreciate it it means the world to my channel appreciate y'all i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out